Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today we've got a fun way to send a friend a gift certificate. And this one is going to represent a Lawn Fawn gift certificate. So we're using Just Add Glitter, Terrific Day, the mini pop-up box, outside in stitched rectangle and stitched square, the grass from the mushroom border, and the grassy stencil. To start, I have a half sheet of peacock cardstock and I am scoring it at five and a half, so it will be a top fold card. I use my bone folder to get a nice crease there. Now this is the bone folder that Lawn Fawn sells in their shop. I like it because it doesn't leave any of those shiny marks when I crease the paper. All right, a piece of white cardstock cut with the largest outside in stitched rectangle, and then a piece of peacock cardstock and cilantro cardstock cut from an outside in stitched square, and then that grass was cut with the mushroom border grass. All right, just gonna add that grass to the sky to make a simple scene, and then with my tape runner, add that to my card base. And now that's a very simple, very clean and simple look for uh, the front of the card, but most of what's going on is gonna be on the inside of this card, so I'm gonna keep it simple. The sentiment comes from Just Add Glitter, and it says, we are cut out to be friends, and I'm inking that with some peacock ink from Lawn Fawn, and that's gonna nicely match my peacock cardstock. And the colors that I chose for this card uh, match the colors that are on Lawn Fawn packaging so that it follows the type of gift that it goes with this card, which is a Lawn Fawn gift certificate. Since I have my Misty out, I'm also going to stamp my little critter, which is a squirrel from Terrific Day, and the little art supply items from Just Add Glitter. And I want to make sure that I have extra pieces that will go into my box inside. And speaking of the box, here it is. This is the mini pop-up box. I cut cilantro swirls to imitate that green crinkle paper that comes in the box. And now, making this box, I want it to look like the Lawn Fawn box. Have you ever ordered directly from Lawn Fawn and received the box? Um, sometimes my goodies come in a padded envelope, but... Uh, once in a while, that teal, green, and white box will arrive at my doorstep, and it, it feels like Christmas, <laughs> right? So uh, there is a green trim of grass at the bottom of the box, and then the inside of the box is lined in teal. And so I'm just going to add teal to the flaps of this box because I, I don't want to ink blend the whole thing but just to give the idea that the inside is in teal. And on the inside, there are these great words of affirmation <laughs> as well. Uh, so it's a fun box to receive. Makes you feel real good about yourself. The nice thing about this mini pop-up box is you could make it uh, look like any box or any design that kind of reflects whatever gift certificate or gift card you're giving somebody, uh, whether it be, you know, to a favorite clothing store or a coffee shop or, or things like that. So that's why I think that's a lot of fun. All right, well, now I am putting this mini pop-up box together and I'm just folding it on the crease lines and reinforcing that with my bone folder. I cut this out of a thicker cardstock, and so sometimes it's easier to fold on that score line to fold it forward and then fold it back so that I've got it just right. And so everything lines up nicely. Just pushing those flaps back a little bit, and then here is my box all set to go. There are two different styles of inserts that come with this die set, and the, I'm using the shorter ones that go along the side of the box, uh, go along with the, yeah, along with the sides. It's parallel to the sides, I guess. Um, and then there's another one that has a crease in the middle, so you can have the inserts going the opposite way. 
I added an eighth inch double-sided tape piece to the little flap on the box and then to these little tabs I'm putting in a quarter inch double-sided tape and also on the bottom of the box. Now that bottom is going to sit on the crease inside the card, so on, on the fold line, and we'll see that in a moment. I'll add those little inserts into my box and I just figure out uh, where I want them and I want them, I just needed two. You could have probably three in there, but I'm just kind of spacing them out on one side. And then I can fold them down, make sure they're lined up nicely and take off that release paper and then just fold that box over and they're tucked in. Now I could have put that little tab on the end of the box in as well, but I can also just flip it underneath and fold it down. And there we have our box all set. And I'm going to put this aside for a minute and we're gonna color up our little squirrel and the little pieces that are gonna go inside our box. I'm coloring everything with Copic markers today and Miss Squirrel is going to get the E-teens for her fur color. And so I'm starting with the E13, finding all of, well, pretty much coloring most of her, but uh, figuring out where it's going to be darkest. And then following that up with the E15 and deciding that the shadows are mostly under her arms and, and under her chin. Well, actually, I've got that center kind of staying white for now because I want her to have a, a white belly. But finding those places that are going to be darkest now even darker with the E18. And you can see up at the top too, I like to recede the, the top of her head so that her cheeks and her uh, snout area kind of come forward a bit. So just getting that blended in now with the E15 and my lightest it will be the E11, getting everything kind of blended in nicely. And then I'm keeping, as I said, that belly sort of white, but I will shade it. So I'm going to come back in with the W1, which is a warm gray. And I'll follow that up with the W00 to blend that into the white. And as I've blended away all the dark, dark lines, I'm adding a few back in and then blending those out just a small bit. I'm um, moving on to some of our crafty supplies. I'm going to make these scissors look like the ones I have, which are Cutter B scissors. I've had those for years. I, I think about 20 years now, and I love them. Here they are, <laughs> just on the side so you can see. And I'm just, I, I just had this black marker next to me, so that's what I'm using. But uh, since I'm coloring over the Copic, and not coloring Copics over any marker. You can use any black marker for that. Just to add in those little stripes on the handles. I'll color in some of the ink pads and the card stock and, and all the fun things that we use in our craft supplies. And some of these colors are going to be these, like the peacock and cilantro, but also just, just other colors as well because our crafting supplies is unlimited. <laughs> so some pink and, or I should say ballet slippers and fake tan cardstock. And then, well, that's that iconic glue tube. Uh, it's not the glue tube that we use. It's more like that Elmer's glue, but uh, just fun things, fun ways to make all these things just kind of uh, represent the things that we have in our crafty stash. Giving her some fun colors on her hat with the pink and a little green. And now it's time to cut out all of my little images and I'm using the coordinating dies with those. I'll add some low tack tape onto those so that they don't shift while I'm putting them through my die cut machine. And here they are all cut out and I'm going to add my little friend, the squirrel onto the front and some cardstock 
And because it says we are cut out to be friends, I'm, I want to uh, really emphasize the scissors on this one. And so at first I thought I'd put them down at the bottom, but I really wanted her holding those scissors. So I used an X-Acto knife just to cut around her little paws so that she could hold those scissors. I wasn't sure how I was going to have her holding them yet, so I cut out both paws, but I only really needed to cut out the uh, the one hand. And I'm just going to slip those scissors right into her paws, and she's ready to go on the front of her card. So I'm going to use just a little tape runner to put her on there, and then I will glue those scissors onto her so that they don't go anywhere. I'm adding my pieces of cardstock. She's ready to just clip away at that. Oh, uh, let's see. So I said ballet slippers and fake tan cardstock. And then it looks like we have some cilantro cardstock. And I think that's that sugar plum. Yeah, sugar plum. Uh, Lawn Fawn has some gorgeous cardstock colors. All right, to put that box in the center, I'm going to take the release paper off the bottom. Now, I could have just taken it off one side first, but uh, I took it off both. And then I'm just deciding how it's going to be. I want it in the center so I can put it on one side of the fold and then fold the card down. And there it is. It's all set inside the card and ready to put all my little pieces in. So one thing I like to do if I've got a lot of little pieces is just squirt some glue onto a piece of scratch paper on the side and then drag my little pieces through that and add them into the box. So those are those green um, swirls that come with the mini pop-up box and I'm acting as though they're the green crinkle grass that uh, comes in the, the big lawn fawn boxes. And then I've got some acetate that I cut out of the stem pieces that come with the mini pop-up box. And I'm using that to hold all my little crafty supplies. This box lends for lots of different layers. So I can put things right on the inserts and coming up with some acetate, spilling over the sides, uh, glued onto the flaps just all over this box so it's it's really fun to decorate. I'm adding a couple of ink pads together. I'm going to lay that aside so that dries. Here I, I have some twine that's sticking out the side on the flap and then also some paint that's going to go in the back. Just the sky's the limit with however you want to decorate your box. I want to make sure you have a good view of that from the side because when I put it down, you, eh, you know, not so much. So the next thing I want to put in that box is a little stamp set. And so I kind of replicated that by finding the tiniest stamps from different sets. So I looked into uh, Swan Soiree and Tiny Spring Friends, Terrific Day add-on that had a, a, a little music note that I'm going to use, just using some different teeny tiny stamps from different sets that I have to make a stamp set. And so there'll be some solid stamps and some lined stamps in my set. And I'm going to stick all of my little stamps back on that acrylic block so that I don't lose those before I put them back in their stamp sets. But for our little stamp set, I have the peacock background packaging and I'm cutting the tiny little bit of cilantro cardstock into the shape of the label for the Lawn Fawn package. I glued that all together and now I can put some glue on the back and add it to one of my little braces, these stems. And while that's drying, I'm going to set it aside and I want to put some extra pieces inside my card. Now I, I had these extra pieces and uh, even if I didn't, I think I'd make some because it's fun to see them all kind of spilling out of the box onto the card. And I've left space inside this card to write a message, to put in the gift certificate. I think you could even tuck it into that box. It might make that 
a little thicker in the center, but if you had printed it out uh, in maybe a small, maybe even a miniature one, <laughs> and put that in the box, but lots of ways you could do it. I realized when I folded it up that I had a couple of pieces that were peeking out, and so I'm ripping those out, and I'll re-glue them in in such a way that they're not going to peek out the side. I mean, I like that the craft supplies are like spilling out of the box, but but not out of the card. So if I close that card, now nothing is spilling out, nothing's peeking out. I'm going to add one more little ink pad there. And now I can put my stamp set in. It's all dry and ready to go. I'm just positioning it where I want it. And then I've got a full box of craft supplies and it's representing what I'm hoping my recipient of the gift certificate will, you know, the same feeling, I guess, that she'll get when she receives her package. And like I said, you can do this with a coffee shop or a clothing store, all kinds of things that would be what your recipient would think was exciting to get. Now, this card closes on its own. It stays closed, but I thought it would be fun to put the twine that Lawn Fawn uses in their packaging to wrap around this card to keep it nice and closed. And it also just gives an extra touch, an extra little detail of what what we know and love about receiving something from Lawn Fawn. I'll snip that down a little bit and then this card is all done. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video today and it inspired you to make a themed gift certificate card for a friend. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!